For airline industry, I want to bring in Mike Boyd, president of Boyd International, an aviation research and consulting firm. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. So first, give us an update on the state of the airline industry generally in terms of performance and revenue. Well, you know, it's come out of a really terrible pandemic situation. Uh, a year and a half ago, a year ago, airlines were basically dead. They've got great management, certainly in the U.S. here. And now they've come out of it, and they're going to continue to, I believe, continue to come out of it. The airline industry is different. Air traffic is different. Consumers are different. Uh, but they're going to be able to survive with some challenges on the horizon. But I think they're going to survive very well. And speaking of what's on the horizon, we have the holidays, an important six weeks in terms of airline profits. What could airlines be looking at with demand and staffing around Thanksgiving and Christmas? Well, around Thanksgiving and Christmas, probably most of those tickets have been bought. I think what airlines are looking at are two big things. Number one is the price of fuel that in one week went up, one month went up about 16 percent, so up 100 percent in a year. That's one big issue, and there's no sign of that going down. The second is Inflation in the U.S. is starting to get a little bit rough. So we think in the first quarter, second half of the first quarter of next year, they're going to be hitting another rough patch, a severe rough patch in terms of, of traffic volume. So we'll break down some of that. You mentioned this energy crunch and the high prices. How much of an impact do you think that's going to have on the bottom lines in these coming quarters? It's going to have a very severe bottom line because they can't, you know, when in one, in one week, last week it went up almost five percent the price of fuel you can't accommodate that necessarily with fares so that's a challenge number one the second thing is it's the consumer a lot of the growth that we've seen or the rebound that we've seen has been based on leisure traffic leisure traffic's based on discretionary income that's what gets eaten up right away when inflation comes along and it's here and that's an important distinction because obviously business travel used to be uh, a major consistent thing that airlines could rely on. How have airlines fared as this delta wave continues to linger and drag on and countries keep changing their travel restrictions? Well, yeah, yeah that's a very good point. For international travel, I mean, the U.S. is going to open up in about three weeks, supposedly. But so what? The fact is no one's going to be taking a vacation to the, to the, uh, the, uh, the lake country of Italy not knowing whether or not they can get back, not knowing what the situations may be. So international travel, particularly Trans-Pacific, is going to be down very severely. We see China-U.S. traffic going back and forth was about 8 million people total in 2019. There'll probably be less than a million this year. So then what changes have airlines made and what further changes do you expect them to make to regain some sense of normalcy? Well, they've been very, very light on their on their planning feet, the, the airline industry in the United States has been very, very flexible, you know, moving airplanes around, pulling airplanes out of the desert, at least flying them. We have a, a situation, say, with Southwest, which you just mentioned, you know, they've totally redone their route system very successfully, a little bit too de dependent apparently on Florida, but they've done a very good job of it. Airlines are moving very quickly. If a route doesn't work or a market doesn't work, poof, they're out of it. And I think there's going to be a lot more of that to be seen in the next six months. And speaking of Southwest, obviously they dealt with those flight disruptions recently. What did cause this? A lot of people have, have questions about this. And what sort of fallout has there been? Well, yeah, let, let's remember, number one, the fallout in terms of consumer image won't last very long. But Southwest is relatively unique in the sense that probably about 40 percent of their airplanes go into, out of, through, or around Florida every day. And when the Jacksonville Air Traffic Control Center went down, that flummoxed their whole system. And then you find a pilot that's running out of time and he's sitting in Chicago and should be in Orlando. That's a giant mess. It's a lot worse. And they were hit a lot worse than any other airline simply because of their system. Uh, that won't happen again, I don't think. Now, something else, obviously, to keep an eye on airlines and vaccine mandates. You've seen United and Southwest taking different approaches. How have airlines navigated this issue? Well, as best they can, you know, the, you know when, when it, the word comes down from Washington, you have to have all your people vaccinated and all your people don't want to be vaccinated. That puts people like Gary Kelly, who runs Southwest, in a very, very difficult situation. The challenge I think we're running into, there's going to be a percentage of employees. They're going to say, I'm not taking the vaccine. Lay me off if you want to. And that's going to really mess things up. And unfortunately, that seems to be coming right at the beginning of the Thanksgiving holiday. So we may have a, a wild and woolly time at the end of November. 
And just very quickly, obviously, between the vaccine mandates and the fact that these were some of the staff who were furloughed at the beginning of the pandemic, how are staff feeling about their jobs in the industry amid all this? Well, you know, having grown up in the airline industry, nothing has ever been really stable. But at least now we have stable management. But keep in mind, when the pandemic hit, you had to lay people off. You know, even if you're going to be just a baggage handler, and I don't mean just a baggage handler, it's an important job, you come back, there's training you have to go through before you can touch the bag. That takes time, that takes money, that takes effort, and a lot of people probably don't want to go back through it again.